And then I want to go darker at the very base of the objects because that's where there's almost no light bouncing into it right here. So it's being completely occluded by the object itself. So that's where it will be darkest at the base right there. How are you mixing that dark? This is transparent oxide red with just a little bit of ultramarine blue in there. And I'm trying to keep it pretty warm. Oh. I don't want it to be, I don't want it to stick out as a cool spot, especially because a lot of these shadows are warmer. Hmm. And that's colors like transparent oxide red are really nice for that because they're more transparent and they can be used for those really deep accent darks. Oh, I see Mel, you made it. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got home and was starving, so <laughs> I ate. Well, at least he's not painting something really yummy looking. <laughs> If this is Brian, he'll probably pick some really good looking yeah. bread or something. Mm -hmm. All I saw was a close up of the sunflowers, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't know how he's going to pull it off. Uh, <laughs> well, in another hour, he's pretty fast. I know, he is really fast. Mm -hmm. Especially those objects like the vase or um, last time we had like a little tub thingy. Mm -hmm. Th those objects, he's able to just get it down in a few strokes. Yeah. 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 I love one, one thing he talked about a um, couple sessions ago. Mm -hmm. He's talking about um, painting roses. You just think of it like a cup. Uh huh. Yeah, and I think that's why he's able to nail down these objects so fast because he just simplified the shape to the bare bones. Like, mm -hmm. this pumpkin, I can totally see right now he's treating the pumpkin just like a ball. Yeah. He could change it into a peach. <laughs> yeah, right? Or anything. But really, like, if you look at the, the whole structure of it, it's just a, a ball mm -hmm. with a little bit more detail as you refine it. But. Mm -hmm gets the big shapes down and once you get the big shape down the form is reading yeah but we always get kind of carried away with the detail and start with the detail mm -hmm. and that's why we always struggle yeah Just starting to get a little more refined on these pumpkins. Just trying to keep that form simple, but add a little more refinement so it reads a little better. Normally you clean your palette as you go but today yeah. since there's there are so many colors out there i see you kind of expand it as you mix mm -hmm. but do you have some general organization to your palette um sometimes i i i do it but i think on this session i've just been kind of mixing a pile and then mixing off of it and expanding out um some painters are really organized and have you know, shadow values on one side and light values on the other but i haven't really tried doing that. So most of it's just kind of finding a clean spot and working into that. And that can be, it's really nice to get all those color strings going because you can get so many slight variations on color and really interesting colors that you don't always get normally if you just mix 
one color at a time, you can really get all those subtle changes. Yeah, there's a benefit of both methods, right? Like mm -hmm. what you have right now, you have all the color variation out there. So it's so much easier for you to see what is out there and just grab that tiny little color to pop it or even mix it in yeah. to create a harmony. Yeah. Yeah. But still there's some, there's a way, there's an organization to your, even what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. Cause I can see on your palette, even though it's mixed all over the place, but each pool is still so pure and clean. Mm -hmm. like you didn't get it muddy. Do you keep the lights in the light and then dark in the dark? Instead of yeah, I kind of try and keep dark. mixtures within their relative families. Uh -huh. So I have like lighter mixtures, I guess, on the kind of the outer areas. I don't know if there's that little spot right there. Yeah. <laughs> but other than that, um, yeah, I usually try and keep things close to one another. Yeah, because when I start, for example, those yellows right now mm -hmm. you have on there, those yellows are really close to the pure pigments. Yeah, that you have up up there. Mm -hmm. but I think one one little drawback of this kind of mixing for me personally is I tend to start mixing in the complementary colors into the pool and start to uh, gray it down. Yeah, and then my palette doesn't look as saturated as yours. They start mm -hmm. to start going gray. Yeah, really fast. But yeah, at the same time, I do mostly portraits, so most mm -hmm. of the colors is gonna get into the gray, anyways. Yeah, yeah, that can be. It's always tricky uh, if you're working like this to try and stay clean with your color. So I'm trying not to expand too far out from my initial mixtures, but I will probably have to before I put my finishing brushstrokes on. I'll probably clean it at least in an area so I can get some really fresh color mixtures going. you clean with Gamsol in between or just wipe it on your towel? On the, for my brushes? Yeah. I use Gamsol, yeah. I'm trying to eventually use less of it if I can, but right now it's just such a habit. It's hard to <laughs> completely yeah. switch. But I know it's probably not the best for me to always use it this much. Well, what else can you use? <laughs> um, you, I think you can use oils, but it can get pretty messy if you're using like a walnut oil or something. Yeah. yeah. I know Morgan Weisling, he uses um, walnut oil mm -hmm. in the brushes. Yeah. So he has a big bucket. Instead of filling it with Gamsol, he filled that whole thing with Wana oil, which is mm -hmm. pretty impressive. But then that's how he cleaned his brushes. And Wana oil is a medium too. So even if yeah. you don't wipe it completely clean, it gets in the oil, it mm -hmm. still dries. But yeah. it's just really messy. That's why he wears this really heavy duty rubber gloves yeah. with a paper towel. I mean, with a sharp towel, whatever it is. So uh -huh. you really wipe that thing a lot. But then I use that too. and. The problem is you, you just get really greasy fingers. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I'd imagine you get really, it probably yeah. gets all slippery and greasy. And, oh, it, it gets uh, really nasty because every time you squeeze your brush, there's oil squeezing out of the brush. Yeah. And that gets onto your <laughs> fingers, your paper towel, just gets super messy really fast. Mm -hmm. like, those are not cheap oils. So <laughs> yeah. But for him, it works. Yeah. Yeah. And I've tried um baby oil before to clean mm -hmm. brushes but the problem with baby oil is it's not a drying agent so if you don't squeeze it out really well you get it mixed into the oil yeah why yeah i've been using um mineral oil someone i think it was alex venezia recommended it and it's just like that where you have to really make sure yeah because I, I just leave them soak them in that so they don't the, they don't dry they don't dry out yeah but well, I just have to make sure when I clean, I really get them really cleaned 